Hello and welcome to Slay Stories, where we center and celebrate diverse voices that are slaying in their lane. I'm Unzube Ufodike, your host, and today we'll be talking about fashion. What do I have here? I actually have something from uh, Paws of Pride. It's uh, a couple of outfits I'll actually be wearing on the show. We have um, received this from the Paws of Pride headquarters and oh my, there's a rainbow hoodie and uh, a Cloud9 shirt. I'll show these to you, wow. Okay, that's, that's a rainbow hoodie. I can see myself getting into this. Um, the Cloud9 shirt and some allyship pins. Let's open this quickly. Whoa, gorgeous, gorgeous. Fashion. This is what we're talking about. And um, we have the Cloud9 shirts, which are one of my favorite on the Pause of Pride website. Just check it out. You can see the little cute pin. Oh, this is so cute. Let's see this, take out the two pins and you can see the little signature Pause of Pride in the pocket over there. I don't know if you can see that, if the camera can zoom in. You have a little kitten jumping, like nested in your pocket right there. And I love the detail underneath the buttons. So, tell you what, I need to get changed into my outfit for this episode on fashion. This is Slay Stories. Hi, I'm Unzube Ufodike and welcome to Slay Stories, the show where we champion diverse individuals who are slaying in their own unique way. Today, I'll be talking all about fashion with my special guests, Yannick Mafuta and Cole Lee. Yannick has been working in the luxury fashion sector for almost eight years. He's worked as a sales advisor in Harrods and is currently a personal stylist and visual merchandiser at Montclair. He's very familiar to the entrepreneurial world through a catering business he used to run, and now he is in the process of creating his very own luxury fashion accessory brand. Welcome, Yannick, to the show. Thank you very much. So, Yannick, I know fashion wasn't what you initially started in, so I'm kind of curious, how did you stumble upon the industry of fashion? And can you share a little bit more about your background, please? Yes, yeah, sure, of course. So prior to fashion, I work in different uh, industries. So I work in the education industry and also in uh, pharmaceutical industry. And uh, I came to fashion totally randomly. So eight years ago, I moved to London. Yeah, and where did uh, you move from? I moved from um, Australia. Oh, nice. Yes, indeed. Yeah, down so, under? Down under indeed, yeah. And uh, when I moved to Australia, London is an expensive city. I needed a job straight away. So, and I wanted to try something new and uh, literally just walk into Harrods and uh, apply. And uh, I was interviewed on the spot by um, fashion brand and I got the job and I've been in this uh, industry for eight years now. Fantastic. Yeah. And for you, what is fashion? And it's quite a broad, Term, but what does fashion mean to you? For me, fashion, first of all, is quite personal. Obviously, the world that I've discovered here in Arrows and in London, the luxury fashion, it's a total different world to where I come from. I'm from a French island in the Indian Ocean. And uh, I guess I got my passion for fashion back then, but I didn't realize how much I was in love with fashion until recently. And for me, fashion is obviously personal because I remember my mom used to uh, dress us up, my brother and I, nice. uh, as like we were um, twins, even though we weren't twins. Right. <laughs> yeah, yes. Who is older? Uh, my brother is older. Okay. Yeah, just by yeah. 11 months and 16 days. <laughs> I'm sure you <laughs> yes. of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I think for me, fa fashion has always been something quite personal yeah. at first. And then now, obviously, I realize it's all about trend, following trend, etc. So, uh, yeah, and there are a couple of things that come to mind when I think about fashion. One is the area of sustainability. I don't mm -hmm. know if you have any comments around that. But also, fashion feels quite exclusive. You know, you're either 
stylish or you're not. So there doesn't seem to be that sort of welcoming aspect of fashion. Do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I yeah. totally understand what you're saying. I think uh, people who work in the fashion industry, they feel that they work in a special environment. But I think, as I say, fashion is quite personal and everyone um, dress up every day, so that itself is fashion. No matter what you pick from your wardrobe, you put some things together that you think you love. So for me, that's fashion. Yeah. 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 So. And on the sustainability piece, what are your thoughts on? Well, I think fashion? the fashion industry is finally waking up now because obviously we are one of the biggest polluter in the world, and uh, and uh, I've been seeing a lot of uh, companies making effort now to um, to try to uh, fix the issue. Yeah. And um, so yeah, I think moving forward, a lot of companies will put an emphasis on that as well. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. I'm. I don't know much about fashion, but right. today <laughs> I, I happen to be kitted by Pose of Pride. Yes. This is very really cute. <laughs> thank you. It's a rainbow hoodie. <laughs> yes. Um, so Cole will be joining us shortly, and she'll mm. tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind her brand. But um, before we move to Cole, a final question for you. I know you are looking to launch your Correct. own fashion brand in the mm -hmm. luxury space, and you are all about bags, which I love, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. But um, can you share a little bit more about the story behind of getting course, to of course, yes. creating so a luxury bag brand? Basically, being an entrepreneur is something that I uh, started to think about when I was in Australia. And uh, but at the time, I was working in education, so I didn't think of. Yeah. So, and then I moved to uh, London, and I still had this drive to become an entrepreneur, and uh, but I didn't know in which area. But then I was working in Harrods at the time, and a customer actually came to see me, and she was she wanted a particular bag that we didn't have in the store. And uh, she said, well, someone should create it. And she literally just planted the seed in my head. And, and then I started to think about it more and more about it. And I grabbed a pad and I started to draw. And uh, I said, oh, I'm turning into a designer. And uh, this is how the, 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 the idea for the uh, brand started, basically, through one of my customers. And it's something I've been working on for a couple of years now. And um, so, yeah, the accessory, my brand, will be very linked to where I'm from as well. Yeah. So that's quite important, I think, yeah, to, yeah. To link it to... To link it to my background, of course, yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yannick. Don't go away. Right after this, we have Yannick still with us in the studios, and we'll be joined by Cole Lee, founder, CEO of Pause of Pride, here on Slave Stories. Welcome back to Slave Stories. Our next guest is Cole Lee, founder of Pause of Pride, an apparel brand for LGBTQ plus youths. The 18-year-old is currently a student at Stanford University and since starting her business two years ago, Pause of Pride has reached over 30 million queer teens with customers in over 60 countries. Thank you, Cole, and welcome to Slay Stories. So, during the break, we talked briefly on manufacturing. So I was keen to understand a little bit about your respective journeys or thoughts and ideas around manufacturing for your brands, please? Should I start? Yeah, please, you because first, Yannick. So for me, because I'm creating a luxury brand, so it's important for me that I manufacture my uh, handbags uh, in Europe. And as I'm uh, from a French island, so probably somewhere in France. Uh, but also uh, because I want to link my uh, brand to uh, my where I'm from. So I would love to some artisan back home to actually create the fabric that I will use for the final bags. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So there's that connection to home. Then Definitely, luxury yeah. mm -hmm. is more affiliated with Europe. So mm -hmm. that's part exactly, of your yeah. brand yeah. identity. So I think what's going to be interesting with this is like, even though I'm from an island, this island is, belongs to France. So gotcha. I still ha we're still European. That makes so sense. I can see how the French label, uh, yeah, the French label. French country of origin. Of origin yeah, Fantastic. Totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and Cole, how about Pose of Pride, please? your manufacturing. Do you want to share a little bit more about that, please? Yeah, I have to concur with Yannick about the importance of producing locally. When I started out, I definitely worked 
with the local factory to produce the greeting cards and pins. And I could really visit the factory and see how they were being made. Um, being ethically made and sustainably made is definitely something that's very important to me. However, when the order volume got really large, it just wasn't feasible to continue using this factory, especially since we're manufacturing apparel and we moved to China, which is you know right next door. So it was very important to finding a manufacturer that could really meet my standards in terms of quality as well as turnaround time. So it was a lot of vetting, but I have since built really strong relations with a few good manufacturers. Yeah, quality and turnaround time, that tends to be something that comes up a lot whenever manufacturing in China comes up. So how have you managed to maintain your quality? And are there any tips you can share for those that are looking to start producing in large volumes from a country like China, please? Yeah, it's, it's definitely an important issue. And I would give two main tips. One would be to, before producing bulk orders of any kind of product, you have to order samples. And if, and I, I would suggest ordering from like 20 different manufacturers if you have the budget and just comparing the different samples and, you know, the time. And honestly, if a manufacturer goes wrong at any point in the manufacturing process, like they don't communicate with you properly or they're a bit stubborn to change something, it's usually a red flag and you should just move on, honestly. So, and the second tip I would give is once you've found a gold manufacturer, stick with them and just, as you keep increasing your order volume, it's about building that kind of trust. And once that trust is established, you're a prioritized customer. So they are prioritizing your order, your turnaround time, your quality, over you know some of the others that they're getting. So if you're if something comes up, you can really rely on that manufacturer, and that's where the quality and turnaround time really comes in. So fantastic tip. So it's about starting with that sample, one yellow flag, red flag, they're out, you know, and then you also build that trusted relationship in order to better develop that that business relationship. Fantastic. Okay, and in terms of brands that you both think are synergistic to your current labels, are there any out there that maybe you've looked at for inspiration or you think in the future you might want to collaborate with? And maybe we'll start with uh, you first, Cole, Pause of Pride. Yeah, honestly, I cannot think of a big brand that I would like to collaborate in the moment. I think Pause of Pride is really about grassroots yeah you know small creators I would love to partner up with queer creators I've I've been you know going I've been looking at like queer skateboard artists I would love to collaborate on a pause of pride deck I would also really be interested in some retailers I know bulletin NYC will be a you know a retail a retailer I would love to work with. So when it comes to working with retailers or collaborating, I would definitely go with, if it's a large organization, one that definitely has ethical practices that donates part of their proceeds to help the LGBTQ plus community or other civil rights movements. And for collaborations, definitely going small, targeting the queer creators, queer artists. Yeah. Amazing. And you alluded to corporate social responsibility, which is another key big area that I know Positive Pride is, is quite committed to. From a CSR, can you just maybe highlight real quick the programs that you're working on within the community to you know, reinvest some of those profits and develop beyond just your bottom line? Yeah, so I would say there's three different things that we do in this aspect. So one is purely financially, we commit 10% of everything we make to um, various LGBTQ plus charities. And we often work with local um, organizations in Hong Kong. So it's quite a big pool. The second thing is we do a lot of uh, campaigns that are exclusively for um, certain, um, certain causes. So we did like a, um, a 
Black Lives Matter times um, LGBTQ plus uh, identity and intersectionalities collection, which we donated all the proceeds for. And third is internally, all our employees, well, most of them, except all, everyone except for one is LGBTQ plus. I'm very committed to hiring LGBTQ plus people in my different roles. I think they add a really cool perspective. Um, yeah. And the last thing, so that's actually a fourth tier, is that we actually partner with a lot of different charities to, um, and organizations in Hong Kong to do other things. So for instance, we made, with, with PayPal, we did, I think, two collaborations so far, and basically we make products that try to develop safe spaces, inclusive spaces within their own companies. And also we we sponsor like, like a ton of different events. Um, we've sponsored Pink Alliance, um, the bisexuality awareness event called Ida Hot. And um, we've also sponsored Auto Straddle in the US. So we sponsored their A Camp, which is a, a camp for um, queer women to get together and, you know, connect and bond. In so, yeah, in inspiring. All, all at the tender age of 18. You, you're putting us to shame here, Cole, but... <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> it's, um, thank you so much. So over back to the studios here, Yannick. So to your brand, um, similar questions around other ones in the space that you feel might be um, potential collaborators or you look to for inspiration for your bags? Um, because I work in Harrods for many years, so obviously I got inspired by all the beautiful bags and brands that I've seen around yeah. me. Uh, but in terms of collaboration, um, I know collaboration is a big thing at the moment. Um, for me, in the future, I think I would love to collaborate with other uh, black designers. So I'm thinking of uh, Tefla in the US. Here in the UK, I'm thinking of uh, Stella Jean or uh, Wells Bonner maybe a case they afford. Um, so yeah, that would be great to be able to collaborate with other black designers, yeah? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, and the final question for you around um, sort of advice for other budding fashionistas out there. How can they begin a brand, a label? And, and also, I guess the second part to that question um, is around sort of fashion shows as a medium to launch fashion brands. Can you comment to the two, please? I think for me what was important when I started to think about the brand, something was missing. I think it was about the value, what I was trying to uh, convey through my brand. And that took me quite a while to finally find. So I think it's really important when you create something uh, that uh, there's a real meaning behind it. So I would uh, really advise young uh, entrepreneurs to really think of that. Um, in terms of um, fashion show, as an accessory brand, yeah. I don't see really the um, importance of doing a fashion show uh, unless I collaborate with someone else who needs maybe okay. to carry bags. But uh, because I'm not doing retail, um, um, ready to wear, so I don't see myself doing fashion show just yet. But you never know, I can create a new concept and uh, who knows. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. And, and to close us off, uh, same to you, Cole. Distribution channels, how can the next call become as successful as you? What, what are your tips? Um, in terms of ad getting advice for someone who's interested in creating their own clothing line, I also want to concur with Yannick in that the, the importance of meaning in behind a brand. I think for Positive Pride, I think it wasn't driven by, I want to create clothing. It was, I want to create a new meaning for the way we live. And clothing is a way to express that. So positive pride is synonymous with living out who we truly are in a world that isn't, you know, currently entirely made for us. And building the brand around that meaning and that identity is what really made Pause of Pride, Pause of Pride. Mm. It's not about the clothing, it's about mm. the story. So I think that's something very important to think about. Yeah. And yeah, for the second question, hmm, I think it would really depend on what you're doing. For me, because it was so about, you know, individual people and celebrating their experiences, 
if you're doing something similar to me, which is trying to you know, rally a community, trying to start grassroots, connect with ordinary people, I would definitely suggest sharing on social media, number one, interacting with people and talking to them about it and getting their feedback and building up your product and improving your product from there. If you're looking for funding, you also turn to that community aspect. So for funding, I actually started out using Kickstarter. So one of the biggest collections we've done so far, which is like this collection of 20 different LGBTQIA plus pins, it was funded on Kickstarter and I relied on the funds from my community. So it really depends on what your brand is about. If your brand is about community, you need to think of everything you can do to involve them. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you both. And perhaps this is the start of another collaboration, a Yannick Pause Pride Who knows? bags. <laughs> Conscious sustainability, you know. Don't forget to send royalties to us here at Stay Stories. I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this episode on fashion. I'm Unzbe Uporike, your host. We've had Cole Lee from Hong Kong, Yannick Mafuta from London here in the studios with us. And thank you, our audience at home. Please follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Stay Stories. See you on the next episode. Bye.